Uh, let's go ahead and get started um, at this time. I'm, I'm going to welcome again our Gainesville families. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, we've had a busy couple of weeks, a good couple of weeks. I'll, I'll share some news in that regard. Um, but I'm going to share the people in the room with me one more time. I think it's important that our, our families know uh, the names and faces of the staff at Gainesville High School. So once again, I'm going to go around the room really quickly, ask our folks to say hi, and then I'll take over by sharing my screen and going through some of the information that I think our, our um, families are, are interested in this evening. Um, I'll start with Megan Pomfret. Megan, if you could say hi. Hi, I'm Megan Pomfret, excuse me, Director of School Counseling. Dr. Robert Scott. Good evening, folks. Thanks for coming out. My name is Robert Scott. I'm the coordinator of the Pathways uh, Program, Specialty Program. Jason Eldridge. Good evening, everyone. It's nice to see everybody. My name is Jason Eldridge. I'm the Director of Student Activities. And Isabella Yearwood. Hi, everyone. My name is Isabella Yearwood, and I'm the Admin Intern at Gainesville High School. Welcome. OK, thank you, team. Um, Families, um, as I said, big big week or two. We uh, we've had a series of webinars, parent coffee, virtual coffees, and student forums um, from May through to um, mid July. A couple of pop up meet and greets also. Uh, we went radio silent because we we received our stocking permit for the building, which allowed us to bring furniture, materials, and equipment in. So that was that was fun. Um, One hundred 50 plus pallets of boxes and other things that we've been moving into the building and finding a home. Um, the good news is it went as smoothly as I could have hoped for. We had a lot of help from uh, our facilities office and our custodial staff, teachers, and um, we still have lots of boxes to, to sift through and, and inventory, but we're, we're well underway. Since then, we've received occupancy. So um, as of Friday, we were able to um, start to move into the building. What I will say is that there, there is still construction work going on at the building. For example, uh, metal trim work over some of the doorways. There's a decent amount of asphalt work to be done around the campus and, and the stadium will be um, under construction for, for a few more weeks, probably. Um, so we're close to being able to welcome students into the building. We haven't had practices yet on campus for, for band or athletics. Uh, we're getting close to that date and we're anticipating as early as next week we'll be able to welcome students onto our campus to, to obviously continue with their preseason. Um, more to come with that regard, what I will ask from, from our community is that you give us time just to make sure the campus is safe and that we have systems in place to um, work with the community from within the building. We're not quite there yet, but as, as I say, starting next week, uh, we'll be more ready to, to do that work. Um, so without any further ado, I'm going to um, move over to, to share my screen. I will say that the team in the room right now is um, charged with doing the best we can to answer questions through the Q&A. Um, I'll be honest with you and tell you we don't have definitive answers for maybe every question that's being answered, but we'll do the best we can to give you the answers that we have. And uh, as we accelerate towards the start of the school year, um, we'll do the best we can, as, as I say, to, to share through various forums um, the information that we believe our community needs. Um, again, I've said this over and over in the webinar, three primary sources of information is our, our Gainesville HS uh, website, our Twitter feed, and um, the school messenger service. They're the three predominant ways in which we're going to communicate and push out critical information. And then obviously webinars if we uh, if we have to do something live along these lines. So here we go. Uh, select the right screen to share, and uh, I'll get started. So um, this back to school update is is really uh, an extrapolation or uh, an extension of uh, the webinar that our superintendent staff did twice last week on Tuesday and Thursday. So we've got much of the same information. We're going to try and fill in some of the gaps where we can, and, and I'll acknowledge that there's still more to come for our families. So um, back to school update. And uh, the agenda is um, a little bit of information about upcoming dates. 
Um, I'll talk again about where we are in the construction process and share a few sneak peeks of the building. It's really starting to come together. Um, masking guidelines we'll talk about um, as a result of the updates that came, came out last week. Uh, I'll share a little bit about the, the, the school day. Um, I'll call it a pre-orientation, and then uh, we'll get into laptops, parent view, and some other bits and pieces. Again, this will be the, the 10,000 foot view this evening. We have scheduled a parent orientation where we'll get into some of the weeds a little bit more Thursday evening at 6.30 p.m. It's a webinar you can register for. We'll record it. We'll share the slide deck um, after the webinar on Wednesday. So here's the sneak peek. Um, as you can see, the, the athletic stadium is, is coming along. We're about to receive the raw materials to install the athletic track. Um, the, the resin and, and crumb rubber that's used to install those tracks is one of the things that was impeded um, in the manufacturing and shipping industry, specifically as a result of Texas freezing in the winter. Um, I, I never thought I'd know about that, but Apparently, a lot of the resin that's used in plastic and rubber products uh, is manufactured in Texas, so that, that's led to a little bit, little bit of a delay in the track installation, but that's going to occur in the next week or two. Um, underneath that, you can see the, the massive expanse of our practice fields, a uh, full-turf practice field. You've got the view from the main office into the cafeteria, an aerial photo of the, uh, the main body of the building, one of our three conference rooms for um, school counseling meetings, um, parent-teacher meetings, um, recruitment meetings, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, one of our computer labs is, uh, is coming to fruition. That is actually a, a technical drawing classroom where students will be engaged in uh, computer-aided design. So the building's starting to come together. Um, other information just to, to share with you, um, there's a, an image of our library. We don't have books yet in the library. We are anticip anticipating their delivery, their arrival on Monday. Um, construction process, as I've described, there is still some work being done. Thresholds are being installed between, for example, the gym floor and the hallway, uh, metal trim over some of our doorways, a little bit of floor tile to be replaced, painting around the building. To all intents and purposes, the building is finished, but again, we're, we're, we're asking that our students community um, stay out of the building for a few more days while we wrap up some of those loose ends, and then we'll, uh, we'll tell, talk to you about getting into the building next week. Um, school year preparedness. Um, we are moving in the right direction. We've got some technology that we still need to deploy. Uh, we'll continue to communicate with our families about needs and, and information that is relevant. Uh, some of it tonight, more of it on Thursday, and then uh, we'll send additional information pushes via email and via webinar if we need to. One of the frequently asked questions is what, what are the materials and supplies that my student, my child should bring to school? And the simple answer is the bare bones. Um, we are gearing up to distribute laptops to students during the first day of school. Um, so probably the first period class teacher will uh, distribute laptops to students in their class. After that, uh, pen, pencil, some paper, uh, you know, maybe a composition book or a binder with some paper in it is, is about all that our students will need. We'll store a lot of documents through classes um, using Canvas and then other cloud-based solutions. So really no need for USB drive, laptop, some basic writing implements, and our students should be fine. Um, later in the year, if students are in a, an advanced art class, there may be some specific materials that are unique to a project that students could purchase. But for the start of the school year, we have cameras for digital photography. Um, students' cell phones, frankly, will also work in digital photography. Um, um, family and consumer science, most of the ingredients will be provided um, unless there's a specific recipe students will need to um, buy recipes uh, ingredients for. And um, in mathematics, we have calculators to, for students to use during class. There's also an online tool called Desmos that students can use. So over time, if a student would like their own calculator, the TI-84 is the calculator that we've purchased. Um, but it's not an absolute necessity for the start of the school year. 
Um, Dr. Scott, I'm going to ask you about specialty program busing in a second, just, just for a quick update. Um, parents whose uh, children ride the bus, um, our transportation office will release bus schedules pretty close to the start of the school year. Um, so next week is, is the target for, for those bus uh, numbers and pickup locations, and they'll be pushed through both parent view and student view. Dr. Scott, do you have an update on specialty program busing? I do. Uh, our the transportation coordinator for our um, feeder area is has taken all of the addresses of students who have applied to to attend Gainesville as a specialty student, and is overlapping those addresses with the list of specialty program stops that we have. As those stops are, uh, as those addresses fill those various stops, we'll be able to publish a list of the specialty program stops that we'll be using. We have a comprehensive list of specialty program stops, but we haven't published that um, because some of those may get, get sort of combed out of the list as we discover that we don't need to use those stops. So um, the specialty, uh, uh, the transportation director said that it should be um, this week. Uh, if it's not this week, it will be prior to the first to the first day of school, we will put an announcement out via Twitter uh, or via email to let people know when we do go live with those on the web page. Thank you, Dr. Scott. Um, sure. Let me talk about student schedules, orientation, and first day. I, I, I didn't have this slide 20 minutes ago, so I'm, I'm, I think I'm glad I put it in there. I just scanned the Q&A questions, and, and thematically, we've got a lot of questions uh, related to those things. So. Um, let me move to the next slide and, and we'll talk about important dates. So next week, we will host an orientation for our freshmen. Our freshman class is about 650 students. It's, the, it's approximately half of our student body. Our 10th and 11th grade classes are the other half of our student body. We want to orient everybody. So we've split those classes, um, ninth grade first, 10th and 11th second, just so we can manage the volume of students through the building. Eight to 11 is the time frame for orientation. We are providing buses. We're hoping to get those bus routes to us from transportation on Wednesday. We will push those bus routes out to our parents and students via email just as soon as we get them. Does a student need to ride a bus? No, students can ride with their parents and we'll try to direct traffic to a, a drop-off location in the front of the building. But obviously students are welcome to ride the bus and get drop, um, dropped off and picked up. Um, the orientation will have a couple of sessions where students can meet their school counselor and administrator. Um, I have a 15, 20 minute session with a group of students Otherwise, students will go through each of their seven periods. When students arrive at the school the morning of orientation, our counseling staff will uh, give students their first draft of their schedule, and students will follow that draft schedule through the building to each of their seven classes, find the classroom, meet the teacher, spend a few minutes in each of those classes as we go through the seven period day. Um, one of the questions was, will, will we be able to distribute laptops um, on Wednesday and Thursday next week? The simple answer is no. Um, the honest truth is we don't have those laptops in the building today. And once we get our hands on them, we're gonna to have to literally touch about 1,350 devices, possibly image each of them in order for them to, to be cleanly distributed on, on uh, the first day of school. So we won't have laptops available prior to day one of the school year. Um, can students pick up a schedule prior to that? The, the, again, the answer is no. We will print the schedules immediately prior to the orientation for students to use that day. There is a small chance those schedules will change between orientation and the first day of school as we continue to build our master schedule. Um, so when students arrive on the first day of school, we'll ask them again to check their first period class on what we call a locator sheet. The student's name will be there with the first period room number. Students report to that room and they'll be handed a colored um, schedule and um, follow that schedule with the formal schedule for the day. Um, will there be other opportunities other than the 18th and the 19th for students to go through an orientation process? The simple answer is, is no. 
Uh, we're really doing everything we can to have the building and then our staff ready for those two days. Um, we will have an open house on August 19th from three to eight. We're gonna send out an invitation with a sign up genius that defines um, the, the time that our families will be able to stop by the school. Think of it as a timed entrance to a museum. Uh, we're gonna have tour guides help our families migrate through the building. If a student is unable to attend the orientation but can attend the open house, um, we'll do the best we can to help students find various locations within the building that um, would be of importance to them for their schedule. Um, and yes, the first day of school, if a student was unable to attend any of these orientation processes, um, we have some student mentors that we're hoping will be around the building. All of our staff will be in the hallways immediately before school to help students find their way around. Um, we're going to make sure students have um, support to get to class and, and obviously time to do so on the first day of school. So open house next week for families, three to eight on the 19th. That will be by appointment. In other words, we'll assign a time and that invitation is going to be sent out in the next day or two. Um, for the student orientation, we are asking for parents not to attend. Um, it is specifically for students. Um, for, for a lot of reasons, one of which is obviously um, the backdrop of the pandemic, just trying to keep students in the building as, uh, as an isolated group and then students can go back off to, um, to their families if they're being dropped off um, before, before school, um, and as opposed to riding the bus. First day of school is August 23rd, and uh, our, our school day begins at 7.30 a.m. That's the beginning of our first class and 2.10 is the end of the last block of the day. Okay, there's the bell schedule. Um, as I said, period one uh, runs every day from 7.30 to 8.25. And then we'll go through our gray day, which is periods one, two, four, and six. Uh, lunch period will be during period four. We have four lunch shifts and lunch shifts will be assigned based on the class that uh, classes that students are in during the lunch period. Um, invariably, PE has last lunch so that students can go and um, have physical education before they go and have a full, a full lunch, if you will. Um, on an alternating uh, basis, we go from periods one to three, five, and seven on our red day, and again, follow through the bell schedule in that. Okay, um, here's the information that our superintendent shared um, last week. Um, so some broad overview statements uh, about back returning to school from a Prince and County perspective. Um, we're excited that many of our students, the vast majority of our students are returning to school in person. I certainly respect the decision of some of our families to, for their, their children to stay all virtual, um, but I'm, I'm excited to see students in the building in our brand new um, outstanding um, facility. Um, we have a second webinar for our families who have chosen to remain all virtual and uh, those families got an invitation to attempt to participate in that later. But again, first day of school is August 23rd and school is five days a week. And, uh, we're, we're excited that we get to spend that amount of time in, uh, in class with students during the year. Um, the statement that our superintendent staff used last week is that we'll return to normal pre-pandemic operations. Um, so there is no minimal, uh, minimum physical distancing requirement. Um, the signage around the school will, will be about masks and, and about using water fountains, reminding students to wash their hands. Um, but we will not have signs um, asking students to, say, to stay six feet apart at this time. Um, there is some information here about immunizations, the, the same immunization requirements that existed uh, for enrollment in a Prince William County school are in place still. Um, and at this point, there is no requirement for a COVID vaccine uh, to be able to attend school, although obviously it's recommended by a lot of um, agencies um, as one level of or layer of mitigation. Um, here is the mask guidance for the school year. So this was released last week. Um, for the start of the school year, um, students and adults, while students are in the building, 
are uh, required or asked to wear face masks. And that's vaccinated or unvaccinated, that includes myself. Um, I know this can be a polarizing topic. It's, it's not necessarily what we all want to do, but it, it's a measure we're taking to try and keep students safe and in school during the school year. It does allow for one layer or one level of mitigation, given that we have so many students in our schools and, and spacing and other measures are, are much more difficult to, uh, to take. So uh, during the regular school day inside the building, masks are required. On the school bus, um, masks are also required for all of our students riding the school bus. While students are eating during lunch, and, and I'll say breakfast also, um, no mask is required during um, the consumption of food. Um, so we'll have breakfast served. We will have a, a, a slightly longer bell schedule between first and second period for second chance breakfast. And then during lunchtime, um, students will not have to wear masks during that, um, that period of eating. Students are asked to wear masks during uh, PE classes, um, even though they're exercising. Um, however, if students are outdoors for PE, um, athletics, waiting for a bus, then um, students will be able to remove their masks during that time. We are spoiled. Uh, at, at Gainesville High School and that we have a courtyard immediately adjacent to one of our cafeterias. We have a courtyard adjacent to our library and then we have an outdoor theater and amphitheater adjacent to our second cafeteria, all of which provide opportunities for students to um, be outside during lunch. Um, when the weather's conducive, it allows our teachers to take classes outside and if a class is outside, then our students will not need to be wearing masks. Um, likewise for health and PE. So if our students are outside during PE, um, masks will not be required. Um, athletic participation, um, playing on any of our teams, um, masks are not required during participation. They are recommended for students who are unvaccinated, uh, but not necessarily if students are fully vaccinated. Um, but we are going to try to maintain pods of athletes and if students are um, on the sideline, for example, we're going to ask students to mask up, but when they're engaged in, in activities, then um, students won't be able to take the masks off. Um, students in the performing arts programs in the choral um, setting, students will continue to wear masks. Um, students who are playing wood or, or uh, brass instruments um, will use instrument covers. Um, and then um, adults in the building, if there are no students present, for example, in an office or conference room, if, uh, if adults are fully vaccinated, there is no masking requirement um, at that time. So there are some of the masking guidelines that we will adhere to, and uh, we're going to remind students to adhere to those uh, as closely as possible during the school day. Um, I certainly realize that sometimes students may need to step away and take 30 seconds without a mask periodically. Um, we want to be reasonable as we implement these measures while also asking students to adhere to them just to um, try to keep everybody in school and, and safe. Um, other details um, really related to the efforts we're, we're going to be taking to keep everybody safe. Um, water fountains will be out of use. We do have multiple water bottle filling stations that will be available to students. So the message is students bring your own water bottle. Uh, you'll be able to fill it up at, at the bottle filling stations, but the fountains themselves will be covered up and uh, out of use. Music and athletics I've talked about. I, I want to stress again that Gainesville High School is built for almost 2,600 students, and our student enrollment next year will be about 50% of that, about 1,350 students. So with that in mind, um, we're going to have a lot of space. Our hallways are going to feel quite empty and our cafeterias are going to be at about 50% capacity, um, and we have all of this outdoor um, infrastructure at the same time. So I, I'm cautiously optimistic that school's going to feel like students have plenty of space, certainly outside of the classroom. Um, our class sizes themselves will be um, in the region of 25 to 28, with some classes slightly bigger, some slightly smaller. We have a lot of large classrooms in the, in the building um, in terms of square footage. So we should be able to keep 
um, a decent amount of space between our students in the classroom, although we, we do want to encourage student collaboration and group work and those kind of things, we'll, we'll try to do it with students spread out at least a little bit as we move through the year. Uh, we will have sanitizing um, stations, uh, hand gel stations through the building. We'll have uh, sanitizing gel in each of our classrooms. Students are welcome to bring their own and we'll have cleaning supplies in each of our classrooms. Our teachers are not required to clean every surface between classes, but um, if students and teachers want to clean surfaces, then, then the supplies will be provided. After that, our custodial team will be cleaning the building according to the protocols that were in place last year, obviously focusing on high touch state areas like door handles, um, et cetera, as they go through the daily um, cleaning and restoration of the building. Um, just to answer one of the questions live, um, will there be a, a peanut free table in the cafeteria? The simple answer is yes. We're gonna work with our school nurse to ensure that we know um, of the allergies that our students have and, and we'll put measures in place to keep our students safe. So the, the important thing is that if any of our families have uh, children with a, a nut allergy or, or another food allergy that you let us know, um, our school nurse will, will I'm sure be in touch and go through the health treatment plan process and then we'll respond accordingly by isolating areas in the cafeteria to keep our students safe. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Um, this is one of the slides that uh, was also shared by a superintendent staff last week. Breakfast and lunch will be provided for students at no cost. So breakfast and lunch will be provided to all students at no cost. That is um, covered by federal, um, I'll say grant monies, but federal monies that are providing those services. We do ask each of our families to fill out the, um, federal form that, that reports um, income for um, families that are, that are uh, in economic distress. Um, it won't necessarily impact free or reduced price meals this year, but it will allow families access to other, um, I'll say discounts or services um, during the school year. So it is important that that form is filled out, even though it's not this year tied to free or reduced price uh, lunches. Um, School days are said 7.30 to 2.10. Buses will run at full capacity. So um, please uh, make sure that our students have masks available to ride buses. Um, August 17 is the tentative date for bus schedules to go out. And August 20th is the date that um, student schedules will be published in parent view or student view. At our orientation on Thursday, when we go into a little bit more detail, I will um, show the, the crumb trail, if you will, to allow uh, students and parents to figure out how to reset passwords if they need to and which logo to look for to be able to log back into uh, Parent View and Student View through our, through our web page. Um, moving on from there, um, laptops will be provided the first day. Um, there are measures in place for students who need support to get internet access at home. Uh, last year, there were Wi-Fi hotspots available to uh, students who had a specific need. We're working to get our hands on those devices and, and access, um, hoping that that's um, for a small number of students, but I know that the need may exist. Um, I think it's new this year, but there is a, an insurance option for student laptops. The Prince County School issued laptop um, is loaned to our students and obviously they're expected to be returned in, in um, good working order. Accidents can happen if families choose to insure the laptop. Um, our division has worked with a vendor and I'll share details about that on Thursday. Um, as was the case last year, the hub is the um, mostly one-stop shop um, warehouse for student data and other information. We will use the hub next year. And that links to parent view and student view for things like um, grades, announcements, bus information, et cetera. We will ask our families to update their information through that platform. This happened last year. I did it for my own, my own two children. Um, it's a fairly easy platform to use, but we're gonna ask families to validate or update um, their emergency card information and, and sign off on other forms through parent view right at the beginning of the school year. So please be looking for that communication. And again, we'll, we'll, we'll provide more guidance on how to get back up and running with those things um, as we start the school year. 
Um, and then we get into face-to-face, face-to-face versus virtual learning. Um, students who are in person right now uh, will not be able to revert back to or over to um, the virtual learning environment. Um, the, the window for that enrollment has since passed. Um, students who have um, a medical need of their own will be able to go through a process the division uses um, for what are called homebound services, homebound instruction services. Um, but that really is the only other avenue that we have at this point as our, our virtual Virginia option has uh, passed the deadline for registration. Virtual only students, students who are learning through the virtual Virginia platform may return to face-to-face -face instruction. What I will say with that in mind is that once a student reverts to face-to-face -to -face instruction, we uh, we lose those seats. So students can't come back face to face and then revert back to all virtual. So obviously we encourage families to make um, careful decisions um, and we'll, we'll certainly be willing to, to discuss them with you, but it's important that our families know that those uh, parameters exist. Um, will students who are all virtual be, be able to participate in um, extracurricular activities? The simple answer is yes. Uh, Virginia High School League requirements exist for athletics, uh, passing five classes, you know, at least two with a, a C or better. Um, and um, although Virtual Virginia um, has a lot of asynchronous components to it, the, the division has a stance this year that students should have their cameras on during instructional, live instructional processes for uh, virtual learning. A um, little bit of information about the virtual Virginia platform. I'm going to loop that back into our families who are attending the, the virtual only uh, webinar later. And then uh, I'll stress the importance to, of um, checking out the Prince William County Schools webpage, pwcs.edu, for additional information. I do believe that the information that's provided is, is fairly comprehensive. It's, it's fairly easy to find. If you scroll down the home page, there is information there about uh, back to school and frequently asked questions and, and both of which as they relate to COVID mitigation and, and other things that are um, relevant today. So uh, families, please make an effort to, to go to the Prince William County Schools website. There's a lot of useful information about returning to school. Uh, the Gainesville High School website also has um, information and as we know more, Obviously, we'll, we'll push more information out through the various avenues that we have. Um, that's the end of the, the slides that, um, that I've prepared. Um, I'm going to unshare my screen. I, I'm not great at multitasking. I've tried to keep a half an eye on the question and answer as, uh, as those Q&As have, have come through. We're doing the best we can. The team is doing the best they can to, to keep up to speed on that. Um, a couple of things for our families to, to keep in mind. Any themes that come from the Q&A tonight that we don't have either a strong answer to or that, that we believe we need to loop back around and make sure more of our families are aware of, we will try to loop into Thursday's orientation. Uh, that's at 6.30 on Thursday. And I'm calling that the parent orientation. So it's really another webinar, um, but I'm going to literally go bullet by bullet through things that I think our families might want to know in preparation for the start of the school year. And we're going to ultimately upload a recording of that webinar, as well as a separate uh, PowerPoint, simply with those bullets in uh, slide form, uh, as a quick reference for our families. So there'll be an image, an aerial photograph of our campus showing the Kiss and Ride loop. Um, there'll be the bell schedule. There'll be the alpha breakdown for our uh, school council and staff and how to request early release for attendance and some of those details. Um, I've seen a lot of questions about technology, laptop distribution, can I use my own laptop, those kinds of things. Um, we'll, we'll answer as many of those once we've had a chance to sift back through the Q&A and loop them into the webinar on Thursday. So um, hopefully we'll, we'll answer more of those questions over time. But Thursday's webinar should be in the region of 30 to 40 minutes. Um, we'll send out an invitation. Um, it may have already hit your inboxes um, to register for that. And again, we'll, we'll do the best we can to take this information and push it back to you in that environment. So at this time, I'm just going to wait a couple
couple more minutes while the team loops back around and, and uh, gets the last couple of Q&A questions. Um, we'll log back on Thursday night to give uh, a more comprehensive um, orientation for our parents in terms of the details of returning to school. After that, we'll plan for our students on Wednesday, our freshman class on Wednesday, our sophomores and juniors on Thursday, and then uh, tours of the building for our open house on Thursday. And again, that will be by appointment time. So we'll send out a sign up genius uh, for our families to walk through the building and, um, and see the space. Um, we're getting close to the start of the school year. I'm excited. I can't wait to see our students. And uh, we, we started working with our teachers earlier today um, on some professional learning. And uh, for many of them, that was their first look at the building. So it's, it's an exciting time for the Gainesville community and, uh, and for the students that we get to serve in the coming weeks and months. Again, parents, thanks for your, your time this evening, and uh, we'll see you again later this week and through the week next week.